John Cole with OKRod.com to do another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to share with you guys my personal opinions if supplements work on a plant-based vegan diet or even if you're on a raw vegan diet. You know, I've been on a raw vegan diet now for 27 years and for most of the time I was like a supplement non-complier. Like, I mean, I would take supplements every now and then like, oh, I need to take that and then I'd forget and I'd take it. Because here's the thing, guys. Honestly, and this is what I would encourage you guys to do, my goal is to actually get all the nutrients I need from the foods or from nature and not actually from a supplement. I've been fairly successful at doing that, but over the many years of monitoring my personal blood work, I've seen that I've been on the lower end of the vitamin D and the B12, as well as some other minerals over the many years. Uh, this episode specifically, I'm talking about the uh, vegan supplements that I now use that can fill in some of the blind spots on a vegan diet. So if you're on a vegan, plant-based, or even raw vegan diet, you know, this is what I'd recommend. And actually, this is what I take myself. It's the complement, um, science-backed multi-nutrient for your plant-based diet. It's specifically designed to fill in the gaps on a vegan, raw vegan, plant-based diet or otherwise. And I wanted to see if it actually worked or not. So what I did, I did a series of blood tests. Now the blood tests weren't necessarily designed to see if the supplementation works, but it was there to monitor my health status. Links down below, below for my videos on my blood test when I did an $1,100 blood test right here, as well as how you guys could get blood tests for as low as five bucks. And uh, you know that's through a company called JasonHealth.com. No doctors needed. More recently, my latest blood test, I'm using a website, doctorsays.com, which is actually even less than Jason Health if you guys are not insured and want to pay for blood tests out of your pocket. Anyways, I did blood tests to monitor my uh, overall you know, levels of different nutrients, and many of the blood tests, I've done vitamin D, because especially in recent times, vitamin D is implicated in your immune health and immune health is actually quite important these days with all the different viruses and things going around out there. In addition, as a somebody who eats a plant-based diet, I'm always concerned about my B12 level. So many of these tests, I also did B12 so I could track my B12 over time when I basically did not supplement and then when I did supplement using the complement. So I started using the complement July 16th and I've taken it every night, aside from some of the few days that I've been traveling on weekend trips, and it's now October, so I've been taking it straight through from July through now, and actually three of these blood tests were taken before I started taking the complement. That gives me a good baseline of where my numbers were at before the complement, and then I just did a recent test just a few days ago to see where my numbers are after taken the complement for you know several months july august september and now we're into like almost halfway through october so in this episode my goal is to share with you guys my experience on the complement if it made a difference to me and my blood marker testing as well as why i believe if you're on a plant-based diet you know it'd be good insurance to take the complement uh supplement all right so first thing we're gonna go ahead and throw up on the screen here, we got my vitamin D levels over the different times. So the first test I did was on 128, and my vitamin D test was 26, which is actually below the normal range. It should be, I think, minimum 30, so that wasn't good. That was in you know January 2022. You know, I, I live in the United States, and we don't get a lot of sun in January or the winter months, so especially if you live and I live kind of uh, in like the southwest, so if you live like even somewhere more north latitude, your vitamin D levels are probably tanked, so it'd be you know probably advisable to take a supplement. Uh, and then I did a test actually on 224.22, and actually this was right after I went to the uh, Puerto Rico, and I visited my friend who works at the Ann Wigmore Institute, ate the food at Ann Wigmore, as well as got a lot of sun, because every day I was out in the sun, walking with my shirt off on the beach, and hanging out with my friend, having fun in the tropics. And after not supplementing and being in the sun for only a week in Puerto Rico, right, what was my D level? 
39. So that went up and my optimal range for vitamin D is like between 30 to 45 and I'd really like to be around the 40 is where I really would like to be. That's where I feel kind of best at because even if you're a little bit low, might not be optimal. That being said, like many things in life, you know, too little is bad, but also too much could be bad. So we don't want to get like super high D levels either. That could be actually quite toxic. You know, in many cases in diet and nutrition, more is not better. You want to be in the right range, sometimes lower end of the range, sometimes higher in the range, depending on what parameter you guys are looking at. Then I basically, you know, came back from Puerto Rico. I worked in my garden, you know, through the spring and the summer with my shirt off, getting as much sun as possible. I again checked my vitamin D, once again living in the southwest desert. I checked it on 629 as you guys can see by the graph. I went back down to 30. So that's on like the low end. I really I really don't really want to be at 30. I want to have like higher number than 30. To me 30 is not quite good enough. To some it might be, but to me I really want to try to keep it around 40. And that was uh, tested 629 and then you know, as I said, on July 16th, I got on the compliment, started taking it, and then my most recent test was on 10-6. And on 10-6, when I checked my vitamin D level, you know, it was 39 once again. I This is likely caused due to the vitamin D in the compliment. The vitamin D in the compliment is not just a standard vegan D. Normally, you would find vegan D2 supplements. This is actually a vegan D3 supplement from the lichen. So it's actually a vegan source of D3, whereas most sources of D3 could be from like sheep's wool or something like that. And a lot of vegans don't want to have, you know, sheep's wool vitamin D. So I'm glad that they use the lichen source, which in my opinion appears to work. All right. So the next test that I want to go over is my vitamin B12 test that I didn't test at all four blood tests. I only tested on three of them because it's not quite as critical to me. Um, as my vitamin D, which is more important for immune status, vitamin D B12 is important for many other reasons as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get into my results. We're going to throw up the graph to show you guys over the different baseline and times how my B12 has changed. And it has changed more significantly being on the complement because I was a irregular B12 supplement. I just take it every once in a while when I thought I needed to. And then most of the times, actually, I didn't take it enough. So I'm actually glad that I started taking the compliment as you guys will see. So on the graph there, you can see on 128, my first blood test on this side, I have a reading of 333. And the range on here for the B12 is between 200 and 1100. So I'm definitely on the lower end of the range. And it says right here on the paperwork that if you're below um, 400, so between 200 and 400, although you're in range, a uh, small percentage of people, even though they're in range, can still exhibit the symptoms of deficiency and is definitely not good. So my goal is to be over 400, right? I saw that. I'm like, oh, I'm in range, but a little bit, uh, you know, maybe on the lower end. Maybe I should start supplementing. So maybe irregularly I started supplementing a little bit more because I'd, I'd leave the B12 bottle on my on my computer desk. And then when I was at the computer working, I'd say, oh, I got to take the B12. So maybe took a little bit more, but once again, non-regularly, irregularly. I skipped taking a B12 test in the February test and then jumping forward to 629, I did a B12 test and with me supplementing irregularly, how did my B12 score? Well, it actually went down. It went down to 294. So that's still in range, but really low and it's not where I want it to be. And you know, it's been really hard for me to just to be a supplement complier because I'm so, you know, in my mind like I need to get my nutrients from food but you know I also have to realize that I'm not perfect and sometimes we don't get our nutrients from food and even if I'm eating unwashed stuff from my garden my B12 is not going up and I need to stop kidding myself and I need to take some action before I have some you know bad things happen because I don't have enough B12 including you know problems with muscles and all these things and even shortening your life potentially so then after my test on the 629, I'm like, you know, you need to get on a supplement, John, take it every day. You just need to not be screwing around with this stuff anymore because, you know, you're doing this for your health. And maybe you guys are on your diet for your health, too. 
you know, and I, I think it, anybody on any diet, I don't care what kind of diet you're on, you should probably take B12 because that's like a related to environmental, not necessarily it's in the meat or not because some meats actually don't have B12 and even people that are omnivorous may have B12 deficiencies. <laughs> so it'd be a good, good thing to take that anyway. So anyways, I started taking it in July and then my test that I just did and uh, 10-6. My, what were my results for B12? As you can see on the chart, 620. So I've actually like almost doubled it from the previous, over doubled it from the previous test and almost doubled it from my first test. And that's like mid range B12. I'm feeling pretty confident in that test. I would like to get it maybe a little bit higher, maybe up to 800 or maybe around a thousand, somewhere around there. But you know, cause B12 is, is water soluble. So it's not like D where you really gotta be concerned if you go too high not as concerning but i'd rather be more at the high end to make sure my body has enough of this nutrient because it is important for many different reactions in our bodies one of the reactions it, it is responsible for is the uh, mma methylmalonic acid and homocysteine and i'll go over my homocysteine um, testing so uh i on the homocysteine on my initial test 128 my homocysteine was 10.7 and the range is it should be below 11.4 so that's like i'm below the, i'm below where it says you should be but i'm still pretty high and that's i don't feel comfortable with that because if you have higher homocysteine then you could have more issues with heart your circulatory system and whatnot so i'm like that's pretty high that always has concerned me because as somebody who eats a raw vegan diet for many years my homocysteine has always been in range but on the high end, but I've also been a very non-rigid supplement complier. <laughs> so once again, taking the compliment every day, my B12 almost doubled or doubled. And my, what did my homocysteine do? It went down two points. It went down to like 8.5. So that's a little better than two points reduction. And I'm definitely feeling more comfortable with that. And I'm wondering if I, if my B12 goes a bit higher, maybe to 800 or a thousand, will my, uh, homocysteine go down a little bit more i don't really know because there's a weak link in there if your body doesn't have enough of certain ingredients because it's like a little production factory it needs this to do this to do that and i'm not the expert in all these things you know but i i know i want my homocysteine even lower than 8.5 but i think i'm well on my way by using the complement so in my personal experience and testing the complement did in fact make a difference in my vitamin D and my vitamin B12. But that's not all that actually is in complement. I like complement because they basically uh, put everything in here that you need that can be deficient on a plant-based diet if you're not really paying attention. So for example, also in here they have iodine. You know, most people may avoid eating seafood, right? And if you're vegan, you are eating, not eating any seafood animals. And you might not even be eating any seafood like seaweeds. I eat seaweeds on a regular basis, not in any large amounts, but a little bit here and there on many days of the week. And, uh, you know, my iodine and my blood tests from January was fine, actually. Uh, but I'm glad I'm taking small amounts of iodine. So this can be very important for thyroid health. In addition, they also have the vitamin K2, which is very important for bone health. Uh, K2 there's a lot of it in animal products, but there's also a lot in natto. But if you're not eating natto, you know, you're probably not getting, uh, you know, K2 in your diet. Although it is said we can make our own K2. I don't want to leave it up to the body to make our K2 when we could easily eat natto. And I actually, I love natto, but some people hate natto. So then it might be good to get some K2 to make sure your vitamin D works so that you have good, healthy bones. Because once again, K2 is a very important vitamin involved in many different reactions in our body another nutrient or mineral that may be deficient in vegan diets are zinc especially if you're a man every time you do something you lose your zinc <laughs> so don't lose your zinc too much <laughs> unless it's for real um, but yeah losing your zinc is not good and zinc can be very hard to find on a plant-based diet unless you're eating certain amounts of nuts and seeds and eating enough quantity of certain foods it's quite unfortunate that Standard agriculture does not necessarily include or add zinc to their soil mixes or as their fertilizer to the plants. So the plants don't even have the zinc either. 
So, you know, if you eat certain nuts and seeds, you know, you can make sure you get enough zinc, but a lot of people just don't check and eat whatever they want haphazardly as long as it's plant-based. So that's why it's good that it, they have it in here. Selenium, also another more rare trace mineral that's important to us. Once again, too much selenium is not good. Too little is not good either. So I'm glad they put the appropriate amount of selenium so that you're going to get a good balance of it. And this is designed to be taken every day. I mean, to get selenium, I eat Brazil nuts from certain areas of the world. Certain Brazil nuts, depending on where it's grown, may not have uh, the selenium because selenium, if it's in the soil, then the Brazil nuts will have it. But if selenium is not in the soil where your Brazil nuts are being grown, then it won't have it. And many people don't know that. But I'm glad I'm getting it in here just in case I forget to take or eat my Brazil nuts on a regular basis. See, magnesium also... Um, magnesium is a critical nutrient and a lot of people are deficient in magnesium. You would think magnesium would be a common mi mineral to get on a plant-based diet, but unless you're maybe watching what you're eating a little bit more specifically, you're likely not to have good magnesium. Magnesium is so important for many things in our body, including getting good rest. So I think when I started taking this, I maybe started sleeping a little bit better. May not be related to this because I do have other supplements I take as well, but the complement is the base. Okay, and then the final nutrient that's in here that, you know, I'm going to be getting tested really soon and I believe to be very important on a plant-based diet is the DHA and EPA, and this is from an algae-based source. This is not from, you know, fish, so this is a vegan supplement, whether you're vegan or non-vegan. If you're non-vegan, you can still take this supplement, even though it's for non-vegans. It's going to fill in areas, if you're like on a standard American diet, probably really good to take this because this will fill in for things you're missing on a standard American diet. Anyways, but there's probably other things you need as well. But the DHA and EPA is so important because we are supposed to be converting omega-3 and 6 fatty acids into the DHA and EPA, and our bodies can convert it, but the question is, do our bodies convert it properly and enough? And in many people's case, you know, I believe that they may not be converting properly. The best way to know is get specialized blood testing. Um, that I'm going to be doing soon to check. Last time I did it, my omega-3 uh, score was lower than I where I'd like it to be, and I pay attention to these things, so I could only imagine that people are not paying attention to eating things haphazardly. Their omega-3 you know, score is like really not optimal, in my opinion. So that's why I believe taking some preformed DHA and EPA so that we do not have to rely on all bodies to make enough, you know, Especially, this is very important if you guys are kind of getting into your elder years and getting more, you know, wisdom <laughs> um, behind you because brain health is critical and without enough EPA and DHA, your brain health and your health can suffer. I mean, my dad has dementia, he has Alzheimer's and that's one of the things, you know, as I see him and my love for him and how he's like literally doesn't forget, he forgets what he did like five minutes ago. I mean, he remembers things from a childhood and stuff, but he is progressively, you know, not improving, which is quite, is saddening to me, you know, so I, I am specifically doing things so that that does not happen to me because that's the, the least of my favorite ways to go out when I got to go out. So yeah, take your EPA and DHA in a vegan supplement. And the reason why I like the compliment is because now I don't have to take an EPA DHA supplement, then I gotta take a B12 and a vitamin D, and then I gotta take like 15 things. I just take three of these every night before bed, and it's a done deal. And as you guys can see from my graph results, I'll post up again right here and here, there it's working great for me. Now, you guys could buy a compliment. I like that they are a more environmentally friendly company, so they, they, they'll ship it to you in this bag here that have some oxygen absorbers and whatnot in there to preserve it. If you order a big order, they'll also send you this really cool black um, glass jar so you can store your compliment in here so it's not getting hit by the light. They give you a standard black top, but in order to make that better, I'll show you guys how to do it. You know, you guys have like two little absorber pads in here. And you want to keep these when you're storing them in there. Just don't eat them. That just helps to keep the product preserved more. Now, these are sealed in the little capsule, so they shouldn't be exposed to air. But as long as you're not exposing them to light, you might as well take it to the next step. And I get these, uh, got these vacuum lids that I could paint black if I was really hardcore. But, you know, I go ahead and then use a vacuum pump, and I could suck the oxygen out of this. So now I'm storing these in an oxygen deprived environment. So now the oxidation won't happen to the... To the capsule 
and plus I could keep it dark. I mean, I guess you could put this top over it to keep it a little bit darker in there. And then, you know, optimally you want to store this in the fridge because it's a DHA EPA. But if storing it in the fridge will make you forget to take them, then I'd say don't do it because hopefully you're going to take these every day and you're going to run through them so fast that just being out of the fridge for, you know, a month or so is not really going to be the worst thing for this stuff. You not taking them every day will be even worse, right? Because if I put stuff in the fridge, then guess what? I forget to take it, but it's on my nightstand where I go every night before I go to bed and like I take the supplements on my nightstand and the compliment is the number one supplement that I would recommend for you guys. If you guys want to get a $15 off coupon discount, the link is down below in the description as well as the first comment that I've pinned to the top. Compliment did not sponsor me. They did not pay me to make this video. I made this video on my own accord. I had to I have to buy my compliment. <laughs> And then I actually paid for all my blood tests. But when you guys use that coupon code in the link down below, Compliment will reward me with a little money so that I could, you know, use that to buy my next order of Compliment. So I want to thank you guys that, you know, will buy it using my coupon code so that I could get my Compliment, maybe even for free, the next time I order. So getting kind of deeper into the Compliment supplement, why I like them so much is because it's made in the USA. They have traceable nutrients. It's carbon neutral. They have compostable packaging. They're cruelty-free, third-party tested. That's very important. They test the ingredients as they come in. They assemble their product in their manufacturing facility, and then they test it. Third-party certification, again, they test for heavy metals and potency and all these things to make sure that you are getting what you guys are paying for. And, you know, supplement, if, you're, if you are deficient in certain nutrients, it can mess up different body systems like your immune system may not be as strong and it's been shown that the complement can support immune defense it can also help promote promote heart health through the dha epa as well as like the k2 vitamin d it can add to brain function that's probably related to the the dha and the epa and it helps regulate normal metabolism you know through like the b12 and the different nutrients that are in here so if you're considering taking a, a supplement for your plant-based diet to fill in the holes, the gaps, so that you can stay healthy in the long run, then I definitely recommend the compliment to you. This is my personal testimonial. I mean, I just like it because they bring together all, all these nutrients that I would normally take separately into one shot. It just makes it super simple, super easy, and I want you guys to do it. Once again, link down below to that 15 dollar off code links down below also to this little um ceiling top if you guys want to go the next mile and kind of be more paranoid like me and suck out the extra oxygen out of your complement so it does not oxidize some of those you know essential fats in there and if you guys enjoyed this episode please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and more importantly please share this with other people on a plant-based or vegan diet non-supplement compliance and deficiencies in certain nutrients can lead your diet style into peril and then it'll cause you to not do the diet anymore because you could say it didn't work and it might just be because of one nutrient and i don't want that to happen to you guys that's why i make videos like this to show you share with you guys products that i believe in that actually have work for me also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on new and upcoming episodes i'm coming every five to seven days if you never know show up or what you'll be learning on my youtube channel uh, make sure you click the bell to get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. The past episodes are wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time teach you guys how to eat the healthiest plant-based diet based around raw fruits and vegetables, which are the healthiest foods on the planet. Links down below to some videos I made in the past regarding different nutrients on a plant-based diet, so you may want to watch those as well. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time, and until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables and take your compliment to fill in the gaps.